time we got Ella Joyce on the line on the Midnight Hour Radio Show. Yes. Ella Joyce, what's going on? How you doing? Oh, we having a ball. I hear, I hear. I want to be up in there dancing with y'all. Oh, my. Uh, Come on, girl. (laughs) Get on there and dance with us. All right now. I know a lot of people excited about hearing you on the radio tonight. Yes. Oh, well, that's nice. I like the people get excited about me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's an honor for us. You've been in so many movies. Actress Ella Joyce on the Midnight Hour Radio Show. Wow, man, you've been in so many movies, I don't even know where to begin. Right. Oh, you kept up with me a little bit? Well, yeah. you know, the first bit. time I recognized you was when you was on with Charles Dutton. I, I, you right. know, I, I actually ran into him one day Uh-oh. at Cleveland State, and I was like, what's up, Rock? He was like, don't call me Rock. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My name is Charles. Okay. Call me Chuck, not right. Right. <laughs> but that's when I first discovered you on that show, Rock. Oh, so you old enough to remember that show. Were you a kid when that show was on the air? No, unfortunately, I'm 46. <sighs> okay. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm still pretty, though. I'm still. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm a little you know, bald. it's been off the air for quite a while. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I think it's been about 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it has I been. I remember that show. I yeah. do, too. You do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wish they were showing it in rerun. Yeah, me, too. Right. I yeah. wish folks would, you know, write the networks or something and tell them why why, why don't they see rock on TV. Right, right. right. Well, you, know, you, you know, there were a lot of famous people who are famous now who got their first time on a television show on our show. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, you, you and... Charles Dutton done did a lot since then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's gone on and done his thing, you know, uh, directing films and whatnot. And I've been going off doing my thing, um, appearing in various films, independents, a lot of them, um, and doing plays and, you know, just doing my thing, staying alive out here. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I'm going to let my other hosts ask you some questions. I'm sure they got some. Pass the buck to Rocky Thunder. Okay, Rocky. <laughs> All right. I like that name. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank uh, you very uh, much. <laughs> that was my brother-in-law's name on on the uh, uh, rock, Rocky. Oh, Rocky right. Carol. Right. I forgot yeah. about that. Right. Uh-huh. All right. Well, I guess Um. Well, the first question I want to ask you is um, you wrote a, a, a book. Um, called Kink Phobia. Uh huh. Can you tell us a uh, journey through a, a black woman's hair? Kink Phobia, journey through a black mm-hmm. woman's hair. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I self-published it um, many years ago mm-hmm. when a lot of us were going through the changes, okay. you know, with our hair, and it was before, you know, it, it was to sort of write down the history of our hair textures mm. and you know, how we got there to be able to go natural. And um, I was just, I was at that point where I really wanted us to begin to show our natural beauty as much Mm. as we could. And, you know, at one time people were being fired for wearing their hair natural at their jobs. Mm. You know, people don't even realize that, the price that had to be paid so that we could just be our beautiful natural selves. Mm. So I wrote that book about the journey, you know, and I sort of highlighted and cited, you know, famous sayings from different people Mm -hmm. here and there that would start each chapter. And to help a lot of sisters to get out from under the perm. Because a lot of us, <clears throat> you know, were permanently relaxed mm-hmm. with our hair. And there's nothing wrong with that, but when you're ready to go back and forth, you know, you're sort of stuck in one style. And so um, I cut all the perm out of my hair. Mm-hmm. As you know, they had a whole lot of products that were on the market during then in the 90s that was destroying our hair. And um, I cut it all out, let it all go back natural, and kind of kept a hair journal about it. And I had a lot of sisters tell me that I had them uh, help them to regrow their hair, their natural okay. hair, and just really love it and let it flourish and, mm. and, and, and be their natural, sexy, beautiful selves. 
And uh, so I, I was sort of moved to write the book. It's still downloadable at my website, kingphobia.com. Okay. And uh, people still download it. And, of course, after that, there was an explosion of black hair books. And, you know, mm-hmm. nowadays our kids come up and they don't even realize that there was ever a, a whole lot of noise about it. But right. there was, you know. I mean, sisters like the late Rosalind Cash and, you know, Whoopi Goldberg and all of them when they first started locking their hair. There was a lot of noise about it. Okay. And, uh, you know, we need to know our history. We need to know what it took to get where we are right. and have the freedoms of choice that we have. Absolutely. Right, right. Absolutely. Ella Joyce on the Midnight Hour Radio Show, actress extraordinaire, also married to an actor. But I'm going to pass the buck over here to... Michael G. on the Midnight Hour Radio Show. How you doing, Ella? I'm doing great. That's good. How I, you doing? I'm doing really good. I really did enjoy you. Um, you know, I grew up in the rock years, so. Oh, I you enjoy- did? Yes, okay. I did. Cause you was- so you know how important the show was? Yes, it was. Hit the scene. You know, sometimes I go <clears throat> and I get movies from the library, so I was just always wondering if they would ever come out with that series like they do other series in the library. You and I both are trying to figure that out. Because that, that you you all were the classic middle-class, hard-working family. And, you know, trying to make it with that one leech relative. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Excuse me, the musician. Right. Oh, right. <laughs> right. That, 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 you know, he's trying to be inspired and do what he's supposed to. We all have that. Uh, a lot of us can relate to that. So that was an awesome show. Oh, thank you. You know, it always fills my heart that I still have a lot of brothers and sisters that come up to me this very day who really remember that show as if it was on yesterday. And that's just yeah. awesome to me. Yeah, You it know, is. that after all these years, it still leaves uh, such an imprint upon their memory in such positive way that they wish, I mean, everybody says that they wish it was still on, and I do too. I don't know. Right, right. Oh, what's going on with that? Because, you know, I see the reruns on some of the other networks, you know, our two little black networks that right. we have, you know, <laughs> right. and TV One, and you right. know, we got, I think, Aspire and Century. I don't see it running on any of those networks. Well, we and definitely want to see it again. Me too. And then from that, so now you're an acting coach and a consultant. How did you get into doing that, and who are you are who are you now working with or able to help right now? Okay, well, um, let's see. I guess it's just inspiration. You know, I had people that helped me along the way occasionally, and um, I wanted to share. And so um, I worked with uh, Vivica Fox for a little while. I worked with Tony Braxton. Uh, for a little while, and uh, real proud of the way they've gone off and had wonderful careers. Uh, four years ago, I was at Yale uh, doing a play, Bossa Nova, uh, on a fellowship, and so I was helping some students there, and Lupita Nungo was my understudy. Oh, okay. And so I'm real proud of her, needless to say, you know, she's gone on and got an Oscar. I was like, girl, I've never been able to just <laughs> what? somebody that got an Oscar before. Right, right. <laughs> and just text them and say congratulations. <laughs> you know, I know somebody got an Oscar. Right. Girl, you okay. know a lot of people got an Oscar. Come on now. <laughs> you know, so that was, you know, pretty nice. Right now I'm uh, working with uh, young lady Tori Hart and uh, preparing her for a pilot she's getting ready to do, written by Bentley Kyle Evans. And um, so, I, you know, I, I do that. And um, I also, if I may want to let folk know, if they go to my website, uh, funkasize.com, I uh, have just launched a new active dance exercise uh, program. And I'm having a lot of fun with that really getting middle-aged people in our community to start moving again and start dancing again. And it's based on all of the music from the 60s and 70s and the dances from the 60s and 70s. And um, so I want people to be able to check it out at the website. I have classes. People actually dance with me. We're going to be taking it around the country and uh, people just love it, funkasize.com. 
and we'd be shingalinging and boogalooing and mashed <laughs> potatoes. We'd be doing the jerk and the cool jerk. Right. I'd be teaching them the Jane Brown slide and the camel walk. Right. Ain't nobody left on this planet, I believe, that can do a better camel walk than I can. And if they can, come on, I challenge you. Right, right, right. <laughs> Well, Ella, we got about six minutes left. We got another host, Tahana Roscoe, that might want to ask you a question. Okay. Oh, and I, I also want to let for I just wrapped on the TV One movie, A Second Chance at Christmas. Okay. Okay, and it stars McKinley Freeman, and um, it's directed by Alton Glass. It should air December the 6th. That's a good friend of our McKinley right. Freeman. He was on the show earlier in the year. Yes, he's a beautiful brother, and I just enjoyed working with him so much. We just wrapped on the film about two weeks ago. Okay, right. okay. Check Tahana that out. Roscoe. Well, hi, Miss Ella. Um, I just started to uh, become natural, so I was wondering about that book that you read, that you wrote, um, "The Journey Through a Black Woman's Hair." What yeah. advice do you have to give to us natural women? Just, you know, be patient. I mean, if you're going through a transition where you're going from a, a permanent relaxed style or permanent chemical style mm -hmm. into a natural style, then, you know, I would just say be patient <laughs> with yourself. And if you're making that uh, transition, you know, there are plenty of things, you know, that you can do to make yourself you know, real presentable while you're making that transition. You know, I encourage people if they need to add pieces to their hair or mm -hmm. get weaves or whatever they need to do while, you know, they're making the transition because you got to be happy with yourself. Right. You know, you don't have to go through an extreme change all of a sudden unless it's something you just want to do like cutting off all your hair, you know. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to be ready for that. And if you want to do it, that's a great way to start, to just cut it all off and start over. But uh, there are a lot of people that want to make the transition. So if you want to ease that transition, then, like, you could get braids for a while, let it grow out naturally, and just mm -hmm. take them out, you know, every every month or so and cut the ends and you know, and I talk about that in the book. I take people step by step so that they really can get that beautiful, thick, bushy, kinky hair yes. that grows out of all of our heads, and we don't realize we have it because we're destroying it so much, mm -hmm. you know. And so what I try to do in the book is give the sisters a different way of looking at ways of being in control of your hair, you know, and uh, doing it naturally. And loving what you see, right. you know, I mean, our, our hair has all this wonderful natural coil and kink in it, and we're always, you know, trying to destroy it. So it, it shows you that there are ways that you can twist it and get those beautiful, beautiful twists that look like sculptures that, that sit on our head that's beautiful. And there's so many different things that we can do with it. We just have to get used to doing it, and we have to get used to nurturing it. Well, Ella, you know, you know i got to ask you one more question before you go, mm -hmm. and i got one more host that might want to ask you a question because mm -hmm. we full up in here. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you, Ella, tell us about that Tyler Perry movie you just did. Oh, Temptation, uh -huh. Confessions of a Marriage Counselor. Oh, that was such a wonderful <laughs> experience for me in my career because um, – I enjoyed doing the film, first of all, but I enjoyed the storyline, you know, because it was one of his more serious films. And uh, I enjoyed the way I was treated on the set, and I just enjoyed working on the material. I enjoyed working with Tyler, with Journey Smollett, with Lance Gross. Um, it just it just was a wonderful experience for me because the movie I have people that come up to me now that have seen the movie who are just honest, they're just regular people, maybe fans here or there, let me know that the movie really had them thinking. You know, really thinking and that's what it's supposed to do, make you think about your relationship with your spouse, with your mother, you know, why don't you listen to your mother? <laughs> And mother always trying to tell you what's right for you. 
and you just want to challenge her every single time. Mm. But um, it's it, it it really was um, a good experience, and um, I enjoyed it. You know, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, you worked with a uh, Journey Smollett. Bell, I better say Bell before she get mad. Yeah, Journey mm-hmm. Smiley Bell, excuse me, I did the same thing. Didn't I? I've been knowing her since she was 11 because, you know, we did Selma Lord Selma together. Mm. Uh, that's a film that uh, you can rent. Sometimes they show it in the educational um, departments of the schools. But she was, and she's on the cover of that. You know, if you look it up, Selma Lord Selma. It deals with the uh, famous um, civil rights march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in uh, Alabama, and um, it's really a fine film, and uh, that was Charles Burnett who directed that, and I met uh, Journey when she was about 11 then, so this was my second time working with her, okay. you know, since she's all grown up and beautiful, you know, I get to work with so many of these young people, and then they grow up, and it's like, oh, I feel like they're all my children, you know, mm-hmm. the other day I was at Target, and well, he used to be little Romeo, and he's big Romeo now. <laughs> and he came up to me and was teasing me, and I, I hadn't seen him, you know, since he was about 11. And I'm like, oh, honey, child, how old are you now? And he's like, I think he said 25 or something like that. I was like, what a handsome young man. <laughs> you know, just a handsome young man. That's Master P, son. Right, right. We know, well, now. believe me, we know. He <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got yeah. about three minutes left. Ella, I'm going to let Marvella Rutherford ask you a question real quick. Okay. Good evening, Ella. Good evening. I just wanted to ask you, how interesting has it been over the course of time being married to someone in the profession and you may be working and he may not be working. How does that work for you? Yeah, you know, it has its ups and downs and its difficulty. But, you know, the longer you hang in there, you work out your own um, sort of coping mechanisms and programs mm-hmm. between each other. And you just kind of accept that that's the way it is. You know, sometimes he works, sometimes I work, sometimes we work together. Occasionally, people call, I mean, this film I just shot, a second chance at Christmas. Um, it was cast by Phaedra Harris. She knows both of us, mm. and so she put both of us on the film. Oh, that's and that nice. was really sweet. You know, that's two peck checks coming into my house at the same know. time. <laughs> that was Hello. Really Hello. Sweet. Amen. We didn't even have to be in the same scene. You know, <laughs> <Right>. that's <laughs> that right. was fine with me. But I mean, he has his own ac- career, uh, Dan Martin, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, he um, has done a lot of movies. He has his own fans and demographics. He's a director, so he's actually directed me. He directed me in a successful one-woman play I did on Rosa Parks for about five years. It was called A Rose Among Thorns, a tribute to Rosa Parks. And you can go to my website and look that up, too, um, a rosamongthorns.com. And it was a one-woman show. We went to 28 cities. As a matter of fact, you know, yesterday was the uh, celebration of the death of Rosa Parks because she passed uh, August 24th, 2005. Oh, in two, nice. uh, 2005. So um, I went to about uh, 28 cities over about five years. It was a one-woman show, and uh, my husband directed it. Oh, okay. And uh, we went out with that. We went into schools. Uh, we went into rural areas. Uh, we performed, oh, we just performed all over, and I, I have it archived at the site. You can go there and see all the places. We went to Alabama, uh, State um, Arts Council. I mean, all kind of people brought us in. We went even to Montgomery, uh, to Troy University there, uh, you know, to see the street where she was actually arrested. Mm. Uh, Georgette Norman, who runs that magnificent Rosa Parks uh, Museum, right there in Alabama. Oh gosh, you you gotta go there. I mean you gotta make that a trip that you Right, right. Well Ella, you know what? I've been down there. I've been trained in nonviolence by Coretta Scott King. So I had the time to spend some time down there. Yeah. But you know what I wanna do is I wanna induct you into the Midnight Hour Radio Show Hall of Fame. Got about a minute left. So what that is is you got about thirty seconds to tell the world whatever you want to tell them and I wanna and with that you will be able to come back to the show 
and do anything you want to do, say anything, promote whatever you want to want, promote at a different time. So I want to give Ella Joyce 30 seconds to be inducted into the Midnight Hour Radio Show Hall of Fame. Dang. And it started with Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. many, many moons ago. Ella Joyce on the Midnight Hour Radio Show, right? Okay. 30 seconds? Mm-hmm. It begins now? It begins now. Okay. Well, I just want to tell the people I love my fans. I love you all because you all let me know how much you love me and how much you miss me on the screen because you haven't seen me as much as I know you would like to. But go to my website, go to EllaJoyce.com, go to Funkasize.com, um, ArosaAmongThorns.com. You can see all the things that I've got going. Um, it was in my heart when I bought the Rosa Parks play to the communities. And what I'm bringing to the communities now is exercise and health and uh, fun. Funkicides, don't forget the first three letters of fun, F-U-N. Right. So. <laughs> well, that was Ella Joyce. She's Thank inducted you. into the Midnight Hour Radio Show Hall of Fame. We, we want to invite you. you back, Ella, at another time. God yes. bless you. Oh, thank this you. is Ella Joyce, actress extraordinaire on the Midnight Hour Radio thank Show. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We had a ball, y'all.